if you speak in tongues for at least four hours, you are likely to stumble on wisdom. Just in case you come to church confused. And there are four relationships in your life, which I don't know how four people propose to you. I don't even know how that happened. But if that is your case, if that is your case, and you want to test to know which one is of God, I, I recommend dry fasting with prayer, four hours prayer every day. If you do it for seven days, you will find out. Wisdom is in that complex mixture. But except you subject it to a refinery, the fine fractions which are beneficial to your daily life might not precipitate from that which you have received. Many of us have the Holy Ghost, but you are lazy. And you are expecting the best of God. What Jesus did when he gave us the Holy Ghost was that he transferred the responsibility of usage. He transferred the responsibility of usage to us. As long as you are baptized with the Holy Ghost, it is no longer up to God. It is up to you. Please help me tell your neighbor it's up to you. You need to know how to set on your refinery. If you decide to be praying in tongues for 30 minutes, for instance, the Holy Spirit will measure out a possibility of life that is commensurate to 30 minutes of engagement. And that will be your reality. If you decide to pray for one hour every day, the Holy Ghost will also measure back to you possibilities of life that are consistent with your investment. If you decide that you will be operating on two hours of prayer every day, exercising your spirit, the, the possibilities within the range of two hour prayer is what your daily life and possibility will be about. So your current experience today is a function of your willingness to switch on your refinery. So please tell your neighbor, help me preach to your neighbor, <laughs> switch on your refinery. <laughs> oh yeah, my courier. Once upon a time, I rented the house. I never knew that the reason why the house was available for rent when I came was that it was confirmed that the house was haunted. There were spirits inside of the house. So people that come and pay the rent, they don't stay there for one month. They leave the rent and run away for their life. So I now came and said, ah, it's a good property. And I did not know that the reason why other people too noticed it was a good property. But the reason why it was empty was because nobody could stay inside. And when I, when I asked how much it was, they say 80,000. Ha! That's too cheap. So I paid for two years. And I, I was, I, I gave glory to God. Called the man that lays rug and he put rug everywhere. I said, this is a fine place. Hallelujah. In the night. Aiko Salamonte Ekamu. White can turn black. Black can turn white. The whole place will be as if we are in a studio. Hawu, hawu, hawu. Hallelujah. <laughs> Unknown for the spirits that have been playing ball there. I'm a man of fire. <laughs> so I switched on the refinery. And the refinery began to, to walk. All night, every night. All night, every night. All night, every night. Even the spirits knew that a madman had come into their, into their football field. And one of those nights, I was in prayer. And I had a vision. And I saw a witch. She projected as if she wanted to strike me. And I said, I strike you with blindness. And then, the vision left. It's okay. Then somebody came to visit me over the weekend. And the person said, ah, my grandmother is living at the back there. She just became suddenly blind. Ah, I said, oh. Oh. So it was not as if the place was haunted. There were witches were using the house for meeting. 
I said, when you go to visit, you send her a message from the pastor that stays here. We, we know our secret. Once the refinery was set on, every darkness that was kindled in that place had to bow. Please help me tell your neighbor, when will you switch on your refinery? Most of the things we cry about, most of the things we are afraid of, are things that should be afraid of you. If only you can switch on your refinery, the deposit of spiritual capital will begin to manifest. Many things will flow out of your vessel. For Jesus had said, he that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. There are rivers that will break out from your system just because you have believed on him as the scriptures have said. Uh, my phone is a Samsung phone and it runs on an Android operating system. And if you have a phone with an Android, it means it is Google Store that you will go for your applications. If you are looking for an application and you go to Google Store, you find it and you accept the terms and conditions of the company that built the application, it begins to download upon your phone. If you have 100% download, you don't need to go back to the company to ask them for permission to use the application because the application is now one with your phone. This dynamics that Jesus promised his disciples was a system of possibility that was going to be one with your spirit. Are you with me? By, by so doing, what God has done is that he has transferred the responsibility of usage to you. Just like you don't go back to Google to take permission to use the application that is on your phone. You operate that system of spiritual capital at will. In fact, speaking in tongues happens to be the only gift we have received from the Holy Spirit that you can use at will. According to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul said that I will pray in the Spirit. I will pray in my understanding also. That is to say that it's up to you to decide how much of this spiritual capital you are willing to use on a daily basis. When I discovered that it is up to me to use I wanted to see how far I could pray. And so some Saturdays I shut down and I begin to speak in tongues. I, I started, I did four, four hours the first Saturday. Next Saturday I came, I did six hours. Next Saturday I did eight, uh, eight hours. And the time came when I prayed in tongues for 18 hours. I said, so, okay. So if I want to go, the, the system will support me. You are prayerless. That's why you are still fornicating. You saw a woman's breast and your leg began to shake like this. It's a proof that you, you don't know fire. <laughs> it's a proof that your refinery has broken down. It's a proof that you are not willing to come out of your situation. Because the day you become willing to come out of that situation and you begin to engage prayer, you will find out that the things that you call your weakness previously, you pass from before them and go to a land where they don't exist. Oh my God. We meet so much when we refuse to engage God. Because built into that facility is the possibility to engage God and to travel in the spirit. If you are willing to pay the price, what you call your weakness today, God will strip you of every ounce of that weakness and release you into your destiny. If you are still here, say amen. amen. So that's the baptism in the Holy Ghost. But that's not all that the baptizer does. In the book of Matthew chapter 3, the Bible says, he will baptize you, one, with the Holy Ghost. Then, number two, he will baptize you with what? Fire. You see, the baptism of fire is a wonderful spiritual experience. 
Meanwhile, the baptism of fire, it comes on the foundation of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. When you are baptized in the Holy Ghost and you decide to begin to run your refinery and you are consistent in the place of prayer, you are consistent in the place of prayer, a day will come when you will be baptized in fire. There are some evidences I have here to show that you have fire. Number one. This first evidence that shows that you have entered into the regime of the baptism of fire is that there is a strange passion for the things of God that invades your soul, that possesses your soul. Your soul is choked with passion for the things of God. You see, the devil operates from the environment. The devil operates externally. The devil kindles situations. He kindles circumstances. So that those that have no passion will break down and they will follow the pattern of the pressures in the environment. They will surrender to the challenges in the circumstance. So whereas the devil operates from outside, God operates from inside. And those of you that have ever been on a canoe, you know that it is not the water that is around the canoe that makes it sink, but it's the water that is inside of the canoe. Oh, what will determine whether you keep afloat is not what is in the circumstances, because Satan will be operating from the circumstances. It's what is inside of you. And so what God does when he baptizes you with fire, is that he places a passion. Some people can't understand us. I was in the oil industry for 16 years. And when the time came for us to, for me to become a management staff, normally what is done is that you go for a training for two weeks and at the end of the training you write an examination. And if you pass the examination, 70 is the cutoff mark. If you get 70 in all of the five examinations you will write, um, you will qualify. Hallelujah. Unfortunately for me, I don't fail exams. If you put me in an exam hall, it's most natural for me to pass. In fact, those courses we normally hold, the least I've ever had was 74%. So it was obvious that I was going to make it and I was going to be a management staff. I'm not talking about a management staff in teaching service board of, of Imo State. I'm talking about the petroleum industry. And because our payment structure in Nigeria is performance driven, and uh, we account for 98% of our gross domestic product as as staff of the oil industry it therefore justifies the reason why we are higher speed and when you cross into the management cadre then you will now have breath of fresh air the lord give you understanding in jesus name Amen. and it came to pass i was heading for a crusade just like today. And normally when I have an event like this, I pray for money to live. And in the evening we were driving to the crusade ground and the Lord spoke to me. He said, when will your passport expire? I said, 28th of September 2020. He said, your job expires that day too. What? Hallelujah. What happened that day? He said, your job has expired. Eh? I pressed for the after the crusade to find out if it was God that was speaking. He repeated himself again and again. So on the 5th of October, I wrote my resignation and I submitted it. My colleagues said they have, they, they have struck me from the village. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, people cannot 
understand the man of passion, the economy of God that was at work in my soul, made that job look like dung. When the great monarch of Zion had confirmed that it was his counsel for me to come out of that place, you can never understand that life if you don't have fire. You are trying to manage the land that you inherited. <laughs> you are trying to manage your circumstances. The day fire comes upon your soul, the Holy Ghost will become your commander. He will give you directives that as a man, you will feel that this is a wrong directive. But when that fire keeps burning, it will take away every pleasure that you have in that matter that you're holding up, and it becomes dung in your sight, and you give it away. Do you know? It is October this day that will make it one year that I left work. The life I have today, what God has done for me today is better than what would have happened to me if I became a married master. May the Lord open your eyes in the name of Jesus to understand priority. When you come into the economy of fire, there will be a passion on your soul. That passion will supersede anything that this world can give. So when you find a man of passion and there is no way to understand him apart from the move of God upon his heart, then such a man has entered into the economy of fire. A man that is under the influence of fire carries a contagious spirit. If you are not ready to serve God, don't go close to him. Don't even go close to his messages. Don't go close to his trouser. Don't go, if he, if he spreads his trouser and his shirt here, don't touch it. Don't touch it if you don't want to serve God. Because that man is carrying something that is contagious. Fire is contagious. If you touch it, Oh my, you begin to behave like it. Hallelujah. There was a young man, he didn't want to go too deep into God because he felt that God will consume him. He is quite intelligent. Um, he runs a business that is very successful. And he never wanted to go deeper into God because he felt if he goes deeper into God, um, somehow God will take over and God might begin to give him instructions that he is not willing to carry out. So he wants the fire to be burning low. For five years, he was able to get by just burning low until demons and witches became interested in his case. And a situation that was orchestrated from the realm of the spirit befell him. He now knew that flies do not perch on hot stoves. And he came to pass, just casually, he picked one of my messages, listened to one, hey. picked another one again, listened to another one, picked another one again. Uh, you know, I told you, don't touch anything that belongs to a man of fire. If, if his clothes are hanging, leave it. His message is on the computer. Leave it. His message is on the handset. Leave it. Because there's a contagious power that will travel with it. By the time he listened to the fifth message, he had to repent of not allowing God to take over. And after two weeks, he listens to the messages. The messages are playing in his house 24 hours. So anywhere he comes from, anywhere he meets, he continues. Before he knew it, he became a product of fire. Because fire is contagious. If you are close to a man of fire, you become fire rise. If you are close to, yes, yes, that's how it happens. Fire comes upon your life. And then great kingdom passions will begin to come upon you. He was afraid of surrendering to God totally. And when by fire he, sub he submitted to God, Instead of his business closing up, the Lord began to give him wisdom on how to expand. He is three times more than what he was when he was denying God access of his all. Are you with me? He 
it is foolishness for you to think that plunging into God is going to reduce you. As you are now, what do you have? <laughs> so you have something. It is foolishness to think that plunging into God will reduce you. Let me ask you a question. What you experience today, is that the best that God can do? Oh, you, you, you can't answer. I'm asking you a question. What you have experienced today, is that the best that God can do? My managers in the office felt something terrible had happened to me because they know me on the field. And then one of my colleagues in the office now showed them, showed him that was complaining about me that I left the job. He showed him our mission to Ghana. When he saw the number of people that were gathered, he knew that what I'm doing is better than the office work I was doing. God will lead you into something better if you can submit totally to his will. Oh, other ladies are sleeping in hotels and coming with little money. Keep yourself. Please help me. If there's a lady close to you, tell, preach to her for me. Keep yourself. God will take you farther than anything that prostitution can give you in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Fire is contagious. So every carrier of fire is a contagious entity. His words can stick to your heart. His prayer can implicate you. Anything he does, he does by fire. And if he prays for you, God will take you seriously. Fire comes to make you pure. He said, behold, I send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come into his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in, he shall come, say the Lord. But who shall abide in the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he shall be as a refiner's fire and as full as soap. And he shall purify the sons of Levi. Fire is the substance of purity. It purifies vessels. So if you are in love with fornication and you begin to contact a little fire, it will kill your desire for fornication because the mission of fire in your vessel is to make you pure. You like pornography with your handset in the night looking at naked men, naked women. And you are now a slave of pornography. What you need to do is to introduce fire. The moment fire is introduced, those passions, those desires will die. And tonight as fire goes round, things will be burnt off in the name of Jesus Christ. The altar of fire is the ground, is the foundation from whence purity emerges. He shall purge, purify the sons of Levi. He shall purge them like gold and silver. And the way gold and silver are purged is through fire. And when God wants to bring purity to a generation, what he does is that he introduces fire. Oh, we say Nigeria is a nation of corruption. It's because there's no fire in politics. Take fire into politics. Take fire into governance. You are going to see a new thing will result. People that consult mo mostly are the people in politics now. How do you expect the land to go forward? That's, he has gone to swear to an idol to make covenant with darkness. The people under his rule, people under his rule are people that will be subjugated because he has fraternity with demons. The Bible says it is righteousness that exalts a nation. And that means in the new Nigeria that God is about to forge. We are going to have righteous people. Tongue talking people. People that can hear the voice of God becoming local government chairman. 
becoming members of the state house of assembly and when ideas of darkness are raised they will challenge it people that you cannot use charm to kill you that went to do charm against them you will become blinded in the shrine something will happen in nigeria that will make every nigerian fear god the people that will bring about the change they are about to be launched and you will see that light is better than darkness what we have seen so far is the effort of darkness what darkness does to a people but the story has not yet ended you are going to see what light we do and that's why we came here because the festival of launching men of light will begin from this ground because God will introduce fire <laughs> oh Mahante Skute Kabakwa when the UN building in Abuja was bombed, charms were recovered from the carpet. You would think that the people that walk there are so, so civilized. You are not with me. Some like this, under the carpet. The day of darkness is over. Where we are now is the best that darkness can do for us as a nation. Now we seek light. We seek a new order of priesthood. We seek a platform from whence light will spring forth. And the recovery must begin with you and me. But tonight, we are coming under the priesthood of fire. And everything that speaks darkness, that watches darkness, that operates darkness we come under intense judgment because some people have made contact with fire are you with me it's a festival of fire and the lord is willing he will stretch forth his hand and he will do damage to any darkness that you have carried in your life all these years it was jesus that said that john the baptist spoke about he said he will baptize him with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather the wheat into the garner. But the chaff is shall burn with unquenchable fire. The day wherein every chaff will be burnt has come. Darkness will only bring us to the point of death and insecurity as we see this day and so we seek light thank you for watching and if this video has blessed you please like kindly subscribe and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos and please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people and most importantly we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section don't forget to subscribe